Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, where we dive into the lives of some of history's most fascinating figures. Today we're exploring the story of Leopold Kronecker, a brilliant mathematician whose life was as interesting as his work. So, let's jump right into it. Leopold Kronecker was born in 1823 in Legnitsa, which was then part of Prussia. He came from a wealthy and well-educated family. His father, Isidore, was a successful merchant, and his mother, Johanna, also came from a rich background. Growing up, Leopold was homeschooled by private tutors before attending a gymnasium in his hometown. He excelled in all subjects, but mathematics truly captured his interest. At the gymnasium, Leopold's mathematical talents were recognized by his teacher, Ernst Kummer, who was already a well-known mathematician. Kummer encouraged young Leopold, teaching him advanced concepts far beyond the regular school curriculum and giving him original mathematical publications to read. After completing his schooling in 1841, Kronecker enrolled at the University of Berlin. Here, he studied under some of the most famous mathematicians of the time, including Dirichlet, Jacobi, and Steiner. But Leopold wasn't just about numbers. He also explored astronomy, chemistry, meteorology, and philosophy. By 1845, Kronecker, who was just 22 years old, earned his doctorate. But instead of immediately continuing with a mathematical career, life took a different turn. His wealthy uncle passed away, and Kronecker had to return to his hometown to manage the family business. This wasn't just any business, it involved managing estates and a bank. Kronecker took on the challenge, and he excelled at it. Over the next eight years, he not only kept the business thriving, but also secured a substantial fortune for himself. Because of his business success, Kronecker achieved financial independence at a relatively young age. This independence was crucial for him, as it allowed him to return to his true passion, mathematics, without the pressure of needing a regular income. He could pursue his research and ideas freely, supported by his wealth. Though he wasn't publishing mathematical work during this time, he kept in touch with his passion, staying connected with his mentor, Kummer. In 1853, Kronecker made a remarkable comeback to mathematics with a groundbreaking paper on the solvability of equations. This work, built upon ideas from the tragically short-lived Évariste Galois, gained him widespread recognition. By 1861, he was elected to the Berlin Academy of Sciences, and soon after he became a member of prestigious academies in Paris and London. Kronecker wasn't just a mathematician, but a man of strong beliefs. He famously said, God made the integers, all else is the work of man. He argued against the study of certain types of numbers, particularly complex numbers, which led to heated debates with other mathematicians. The most intense and famous conflict was with Georg Cantor, the founder of set theory. Kronecker was vehemently opposed to Cantor's work. The conflict between Kronecker and Cantor wasn't just academic, it was deeply personal. Kronecker used his influence to block Cantor's work from being published and even prevented him from obtaining a professorship. Despite his unorthodox views, Kronecker was respected and admired. Although he wasn't formally employed at the University of Berlin, he gave lectures there regularly. However, his lectures were known to be quite challenging, leaving only the most dedicated students by the end of each course. In 1883, Kummer retired and only then did Kronecker become a full professor at the university. On a personal note, Kronecker married his cousin, Fanny Prausnitzer, in 1848, and they had six children together. The family lived in a beautiful house in Berlin, where they often hosted musical evenings, a passion of Kronecker's. He played the piano and sang, and despite being only a little over 150 centimeters tall, he was physically active, enjoying swimming and mountain climbing. Sadly, in 1891, Fanny passed away after an accident in the mountains. Heartbroken, Kronecker followed her just four months later. Leopold Kronecker's legacy continues to influence mathematics today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more stories about remarkable scientific figures. See you next time!